Please. David Mills is going to, uh, from the Marine Centre in Wales is going to be talking about maximising the effects of marine monitoring to support the development of underwater marine renewable energy. Great to be here. Fantastic to be at British Antarctic Survey and great to be within this meeting, which has been so pertinent to much of my least recent, well, and earlier work with career as an earlier doctor of digital technologies. Matt was talking about smart boys yesterday. I developed a, a smart boy program at CFAS probably about 20, 25 years ago. So really an early doctor of solid state, single channel recorders attached to single sensors left in the sea. And actually for me, that started a, a, a complete journey in my working life from data rich, from data poor to data rich information for information. So after working at CFAS for 25 years or more, I then moved to a post funded by the European uh, commission within Bangor to support the development of, let's say, data systems uh, that in turn were delivering data and information to de-risk business decisions to underpin the, the blue growth uh, within the, particularly the marine domain of Wales, specifically focused on marine renewable energy and particularly subsurface systems, tidal stream, wave, potentially tidal lagoon. But this work in particular, which began last year, um, is to uh, support the, the specifically the development of the marine demonstration zone uh, off the coast of Anglesey, designated by the Crown Estate, but where my slide has changed on the laptop, but not on the, what do we need to do here? Just and uh, again. Next slide. Yeah. With the remote thing. So there's a remote here. Yeah. All ah, right. Well, I tried to do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Great. Yeah. Okay. So on the right hand side of the slide, you can see the sort of devices that are being deployed. Think of a windmill turned upside down, placed in areas where there are strong tidal streams. Um, as I say, there are two zones designated by the Crown Estate for testing such systems waves of temperature tidal stream devices off the coast of Anglesey, and a number of these around around the UK. So the work I'm describing is funded by the EU. We had the last largest significant uh, funding from the European Regional Development Fund into Wales last year, about 30 million to support the development of this capability. The Crown Estate is also putting funding in as well. Why, why is this important? We have a climate emergency, we need to decarbonize the economy, we need a different mix of technologies to deliver the energy to the UK grid. And clearly we need to understand whether these devices are, are capable of addressing that challenge. You'll see here digital technologies playing a key role uh, in the, uh, the, the, the uh, work that I'm going to describe from gathering data right the way through, of course, to ensuring that data is reusable and trustable and provides the evidence base that is required. We're deploying the Armada cyber infrastructure specifically to meet that data, data challenge. And I'll finish up with uh, some summary and conclusions. So here you can see some of the devices, some of the companies that we're working with. So this is very much industry focused. Uh, piece of work. So what I'm going to describe to you then is the, um, the Marine Characterization Research Project. This has been funded partially by the EU and by the Crown Estate to deliver something called the Environmental Mitigation and Management Plan. This is a requirement of the marine license uh, required by the regulator, the national, uh, the NRW, uh, the national, uh, the, the, you know, the regulator, uh, within Wales, it comes to the Environment Agency in the UK, National Resources of Wales. It's comprised of a number of projects uh, through which uh, we we'll take field surveys, uh, baseline data gathering, uh, continued monitoring through the process of development, building and operation of this scheme. Um, there will be mitigation measures required by the regulator, uh, and there's a, a, a cross-cutting data management capacity uh, which we, which I will just be describing to you. So, sitting 
Behind this scheme is an advisory board. It comprised of the conservation bodies, domain experts, uh, and the uh, developers of these systems. An evidence base is required, which will be assembled around a number of questions. These questions in turn lead to uh, a set of indicators, which we need to populate with data. The evidence must be, for example, uh, that tidal state may influence the behavior of sensitive species. I haven't mentioned the sensitive species here, primarily marine mammals, diving seabirds, migratory fish. So those are the target species that we're interested in. And we want to find out how their behavior may change in relation to the building, the operation uh, of these underwater structures. We're interested in the potential for changes before, so baseline data, what happens before, what happens afterwards, what happens in terms of distribution and specific behavior of um, uh, the target species. There are specific metrics that are being put in place. And so what you'll see, this program began last year, not all the observational systems are in place by, by far, but it's a piece of work which is evolving. So this really is a huge data challenge. I don't think the actual funders of the work realized quite how the challenge involved. We go from everything on the left-hand side, from uh, drone surveys, looking for surface hydrographic features, looking for observations of marine mammals, for example, uh, surveys from small boats um, within the demonstration zone, again, looking for both for birds and marine mammals. You can see the sorts of annual data uh, challenges, annual data uh, estimates for each of these different observational strategies. We move across to uh, tagging, this is done by RSPB, making use of IoT and LoRaWAN networks and really cutting edge technologies deployed here. Photographic surveys from the shore, interested in potential impacts upon breeding of birds in the vicinity <coughs> off the coast of Hollyhead. Uh, we will be gathering data using particularly the um, and sound traps, these are uh, acoustic, passive acoustic microphones deployed in a variety of different ways, drifting boy arrays, fixed points over long periods of time, towed behind vessels, and a range of uh, uh, imaging and optical. We estimate about 270 terabytes of data a year, which will be forming the basis of the evidence base upon which decisions will be made as to whether this technology be, can be developed and implemented at scale. So the Armadis infrastructure in a way was sort of already in place. It was in place because of, because of earlier ERDF funded work to develop data solutions for the marine renewable energy sector. And so we've been able and are in the process of adapting this to the particular challenges uh, of this, of the MRCP, this new characterization project. So much of this is in place. We have uh, a metadata system. Uh, we upload metadata. We've developed, of course, the templates. One of the challenges here is that battle for hearts and minds. We cannot simply allow data to be stored on USBs and hard drives and drawers. This data can be legally challenged. It needs to be in a place where we can find it and trust it and reuse it. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible uh, for the researchers to engage with this system. So we develop mm -hmm. templates, we work with the data gatherers, we will upload the metadata to our metadata management system alongside the location data for the data itself. The data itself will be placed in Amazon Cloud Storage. The metadata is then can be interrogated in our map-based web portal. This portal was developed earlier. It was developed, co-developed with the industry. We sat down and worked with them not following perhaps the highly detailed schedule that we saw, for example, in workshop two yesterday, but nevertheless, embedding the principles of co-design from the outset was critical to make sure that this portal was fit for purpose. It needs to be adapted, for example, to enable us to, to bring in the new data types that we will collect. Once there, people can interrogate the meta, the, the uh, searchable um, data, um, can locate where the data is, we can draw maps, we can extract and interrogate the data in a variety of different ways, and then download the raw process or other data, provide some analytical, we provide analytical facilities alongside the web portal in order to then to generate the outputs which will underpin the evidence base that we're creating. This next slide then sort of begins to show how we work with across 
uh, the different data collectors across the different work packages. I noticed that there's a poster out there from the Sea Mammal Research Unit. We're working very closely with a couple of the, the main the named authors on that, on that particular poster. So, for example, one of the big data challenges is around, of course, the, the, the PAM sound traps, the acoustic monitoring that's undertaken. And so we're working with St Andrews to develop a new pipeline, ensuring that the data once collected is securely stored, but also to embed, for example, the standard data analysis package, which is PAMGAR, within the cloud. So we can scale up the processing of this data and deliver outputs either as a standalone in terms of sightings of marine mammals, identification, abundance and distribution, or to pass that down into what we're calling an EMMMP reporting tool, which is under development at the moment, so that we can bring in data across all work packages. There's a, an exciting opportunity here, really, to bring in data from multiple sources, including uh, abiotic and um, biotic data from other sources to enrich uh, the evidence base with all available data or relevant data for this location, to bring it together, to visualize it, to analyze it, and then filter it and generate outputs agreed with the uh, end users, with the advisory board, that it will form the basis, the, uh, the, the building blocks of the evidence base, which must be uh, uh, sufficiently robust to enable us to, to withstand the, the scrutiny, uh, potentially, as I say, within a legal setting. This final slide gives an example of the way that we're beginning to think how we might deploy AI to enhance our capacity. Can we, for example, reduce uncertainty in the processing of PAM data um, uh, using uh, AI as, uh, as a, a tool? to, let's say, reduce the time to insight in these very large data sets that we gather. A challenge, of course, for AI here, and it was picked up by the last speaker, whose name, first name, I would struggle to pronounce, uh, but uh, really hit the ball on the head. This clearly needs to be an acceptable way of generating uh, evidence that could be challenged. Um, is it ex we need to uh, consider the way that AI may be explicable if we have a black box solution, is this going to be fit for, for, for purpose? Are there white box solutions, so called, that we can perhaps uh, think about making, making AI acceptable in this sort of, to address these sorts of challenges? And we clearly see the potential as we draw together all this data for really letting the picture tell the story, to explore these data, look for new relationships in the data um, that perhaps would not have been envisaged at the outset. Um, so to finalise and finish then, that we have, we've got the capacity to ingest very large amounts of data. We will be working to the standards are repeated so often here. It's really interesting to see how frequently now we encompass, uh, uh, come across the, the desire to embrace fair uh, principles. Absolutely uh, essential. Uh, we can integrate this data across all my work packages with this opportunity to generate new insights that were not anticipated at the outset. Also interesting, I think there was a reason, there is a real opportunity to create a forum here, uh, which now the regulators, the applicants, the domain experts to work together to explore that data to reach a common understanding. So it's clear that the only feasible solution to this challenge is through the application of digital technologies, both from data collection, its analysis, its long-term storage and legacy. And here we, you know, our purpose was to develop a, a, a monitor, a, a fit for purpose monitoring assessment framework. And for me, that challenge of what is fit for purpose is key. That means we need clarity about purpose at the outset to ensure we don't design a solution in search of a problem. Uh, and finally, the, the real challenge for us is this robust evidence base. What does it look like? What are the challenges it's likely to encounter? To ensure that we can determine whether these technologies are indeed uh, a sensible strategy for the UK to adopt. Thank you. Excellent timing. <laughs> Got one minute for a question. Um, I'm trying to pick up on your last point, really, about sustainability uh, or, or legacy. I think you, you said. How, how do you imagine your portal that you've co-designed with users with bespoke functionality and all that, you know, terabytes of data, 
Does that eventually make it into a data center? Absolutely. And, and, and in particular, the functionality, because you designed a user interface and we, we've got mechanisms for ingesting data, but not necessarily for the long-term legacy of the functionality. I guess most top of my mind was legacy for data. Absolutely, we're working to recognize standards, which follow MEDIN and the marine metadata uh, uh, standards for the UK, which in turn comparable for, for Europe. Um, and yes, that, that data could be held in recognized data centers. At the moment, it makes sense to keep it locally because we can do things here that we couldn't do elsewhere. Um, so yes, we have thought through legacy. We know what the costs are. We're in, in, in discussions about it's really, I think at the end of the day, what, what I always feel is the challenge for things that I, of course, think are the best things since sliced bread, is it has to earn the right to be sustained. Mm -hmm. What's the next question? Mm -hmm. Is this the appropriate solution? Data is king. We need to make sure, as far as the functionality is concerned, <coughs> I suppose I'm less concerned about that. And I actually, I haven't thought about legacy for, for that aspect, mm -hmm. but I do feel that at the end of the day, it's going to be doing, you know, what... It's got to do something. We have an operational system here designed to do a specific job. That may not be the job that's required in the future. And so perhaps it's right that it should be on the vine. Fair enough. And maybe the, the, the design, the concepts that you acquired during the co-design could also be packaged up somehow and, 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 and donated along with the data. So a new Absolutely. application. Thank you, uh, David.